Hey everybody, I'm making a new Hero Clicks video, and since today is the last day of 2018, I wanted to make a Hero Clicks video talking about my favorite figures that were released in 2018. And the way I've broken it down is I've kind of chosen two of my favorite figures from each set and then kind of an honorable mention of another piece. I, I guess I could have just made it the top three pieces from each set, but whatever. Um, so let's just start out with X-Men Xavier School was the first regular set of the year. came out in February. I have HC Rams loaded up on the right side and a picture of the figure on the left side. That's from the official Heroclix website. This is HC Rams. Definitely check them out. Um, so my, it, it's hard to talk about X-Men Xavier School without mentioning Super Rare Cyclops and Super, Super Rare Wolverine because those pieces kind of have just basically put the entire rest of the set to shame. They are so good for what they do for 50 points, maybe even for 150 points with ID cards. Just hit the headmaster trait. It's just absolutely broken when you have multiple characters with it. And on a similar fashion, the regular rare Professor X, uh, it, it's hard not to mention him either. Every time I run into him, either an ID card, summon, or a regular, he absolutely just destroys me. But I didn't want to choose him because, you know, I don't try to play them that often. Uh, I actually traded away my Cyclops and Wolverine in order to make get some cash, uh, in order to pay some bills. And I, I just don't play my Professor X because he's so overpowered in what he does. Um... So I had to kind of like think of pieces that maybe aren't my absolute favorite ones in the set, but ones that I have fun playing with. And the first one that came to mind was Brew. Uh, he's 50 points. You can play him at 25 points, but all you get is the first two clicks of his doll. So you would have like a Leap Climber that has Outwit and Toughness that he could be carried around because he's tiny. For 25 points, that is not bad at all for an X-Men theme team. Um, for a 50 points, you get this really cool thing where he starts out with the leap climb, outwit, all that kind of stuff, but then he, he gets knocked onto these stop clicks. And that's really fun because he has back-to-back -back stop clicks, meaning that for 50 points, you're getting somebody that's really hard to just kill. And he can go right up on somebody and base them and be like, okay, hit me, you know? Um... And once he gets bounced onto this area, he has Exploit Weakness with Blades. He has Battle Fury, so he gets past Shape Change. He has Combat Reflexes, Charge. Uh, he, he, he turns into a monster for 50 points at that point. And uh, I, I've had a little bit of success with him. Not the most, but I, I just think his doll is super fun, super interesting. I love tiny characters because almost anybody can carry him around. And uh, I do wish he didn't minus one movement when carried around, but whatever. Um, I really enjoy this dude. He has X-Man keyword. That's the number one most important keyword to me for an X-Man set. So he succeeds. There's not many broods to play with, but, you know, X-Man's really cool. So Brew, Brew is my kind of, because this is an X-Man set, and I can't mention Professor X, Wolverine, or Cyclops. Brew is one of my top favorite pieces from the set. The next one that I want to talk about is, and this is a common, her name is Skids. Uh, she is pretty cool. I played her. I've used her as a regular character. I used her as an ID card summon. She's really cool for in both uses because uh, she has barrier, defend, and then it, at the beginning of your turn, she can knock back an adjacent opposing character one square. So, uh, I, I most of the time, like I've used her as an ID card summon, so I can like really hunker down i can id card summon her defend everybody sharing the 18 defense to everybody adjacent to her and then put up a barrier also so like not only like you boosted all your guys defenses but then also um you know you're sharing the 18 so it's harder if your friendly characters have combat reflexes or energy shield deflection that'll bump them up to a 20 um in in those closer range attacks um, she has sidestep, she can move around a little bit, not really much range, not really much of an attacker, but 
for what she does with that special defense, I really do like. Her keywords could use some work. I understand she's not an X-Man, but this is an X-Man set, and like 99% of the teams I'm building from this set are X-Man themed teams. But she does have new mutants and X-Factor, and there are some new mutants and X-Factor pieces in this set. So, and, and then the Deadpool and X-Force set. So, it's not too hard. And again, you can use her as an ID card summon. Um, which isn't bad at all. Three point ID card, uh, student ID card, not bad at all. Uh, I've, I've used her multiple times and I've enjoyed using her every single time. 18 defenses all the way down the line. She could even become offensive on that third click, probably. But I mean, just 18 defenses, super defensive barrier, really cool piece. And then the, the honorable mention, um, the honorable mention for. X-Men and Xavier School is Hellion. And part of the reason I do an honorable mention is because I haven't played this piece as much as I've seen other people play this piece. Uh, one of my friends, he loves playing this piece. He loves literally killing Hellion like on the first turn. And he will just like, because Hellion has this really cool telekinesis. When he uses it, you may deal him one unavoidable damage. If you do, after resolutions, he can use telekinesis at no cost. So what that means is you can keep chaining it because at no cost means you can just keep chaining it because uh, it'll keep activating it other than on his last click. So you can literally like telekinesis, do it again, telekinesis, do it again, telekinesis, do it again. And then I guess he, so I guess three or four telekinesis in a row on, on the first turn of the game. And my, my, one of my friends loves to use it just to like position his team really well. Um, it's, it's, it's crazy what you can do with it. It really, really is crazy. He has sidestep, he even has leadership, which is pretty cool. Um, cause leadership is a really cool, you know, thing. And he, you don't really see leadership on too many pieces anymore other than the headmasters, which were all throughout this set. The Hellions trait is decent, but he's most likely not going to be attacking unless he's throwing an object, which is, I mean, you know, not too bad. Uh, his attack values are okay, his damage values are and eh, defense, I mean, he is used to TK people, pretty much, TK. He does have X-Men keyword, which, again, is so important to me. Hellions, there are some Hellions in the set, it's funny, his name is Hellion, and I don't think this is a generic Hellion, I mean, his name, he has a real name, so I don't know if the group was named after him or what, but um, there are some Hellions, I yeah, I'd rather play him in the X-Men theme team than a Hellion theme team. But, you know, that's just me. Uh, but I, I think this re this piece is really cool. Um, just multiple TKs back to back to back to back to back. Uh, so, you know, and, and, and once you bounce them onto there, guess what? He can still do something the next turn because he has willpower at that point. I mean, this piece brings a lot to the table. Six range, TK, 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 TK. Uh, just a lot of cool stuff. And so that were my top three figures, kind of, from the Xavier School set. Again, I can't really, I don't really want to talk about Wolverine or Cyclops or Professor X, just because they are so overpowered, in my opinion. Okay, so jumping into the next set. Let's see, let's move over here. You gotta love HC Realms. They have all the sets up here. Easily, easy to find them. Check them out at hcrealms.com. Okay, so my number one piece, now my number one piece in on in Avengers Infinity is unseen and it's not because he's overpowered it's not because he's busted not because he's gonna run across the field and hit somebody over the head for five damage it's just because he he to me he has so much untapped potential he is so close to being like this meta piece but like he's just missing something and like in every set that comes out I always I'm thinking whenever we get these new equip objects I'm thinking can I put that on unseen and break them you know what can I do with unseen to act, to take him to the next level um, so what he does is he has nine range, which is really amazing. But then when you combine it where he can ignore elevated terrain, ignore hindering terrain and ignore characters for targeting purposes, it's, it's really, really, really nice. Meaning that he, he can see people so well, other than like blocking terrain, it's really hard to hide from. Him. It's really, really hard to hide from him. And then you team it up, you add that with his outwit and probability control, means he's a really good support piece that can see your guys and see your opponent's guys um, pretty well to prom and outwit stuff. 
Um, that by itself is pretty cool. He has power cosmic, that which gives him willpower. I mean, it also means you can't outwit him at any point. Uh, let's see, he has traded phasing teleport and stealth. So it's hard to base him, and it's going to be hard to shoot him if he's in hindering. Um, and then when he uses phasing teleport, after resolutions, he can use smoke cloud at no cost. Meaning that he can phase out into the middle of nowhere, put down smoke underneath him, and be in stealth. It's it's really, really cool. I've also used it where he's generated stealth for other characters. I mean, he's generated hindering terrain uh, for other characters that had stealth. And it's also been really useful. Uh, I could only imagine having two of this dude. So, like, every turn you're like, okay, phasing, uh, phasing smoke cloud, phasing smoke cloud with the other one. You know, going back and forth, phasing smoke cloud, phasing, phasing smoke cloud. But again, he has willpower, so he can do it two turns in a row if you need to. Okay, so he has all this going on. Defensive-wise, 18s across the board. Super senses, but succeeds on a 50-50. 4, 5, or 6. I mean, it's going to be hard to shoot him already because he's in stealth. But now you have a 50-50 chance if we got come up and run at him. I mean, ugh. You know, um, it's just strong. Um, he only has 4 clicks of life, but he's 65 points. I mean... I, I don't know what else to expect from this dude. And then another reason why I really, really like this piece. Uh, he has a special attack power. When an opposing character uses Colossal Retaliation to make an attack, modify its attack minus two. And that's just, it appeals to me so much because I'm not really a meta player. I'm often trying to counter the meta. And Colossal Retaliation has been big in the meta since it's since it first started. Um, since it f was first added to the game as a mechanic, so it's 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 a huge thing, you know. Suddenly, these colossal retaliators that are coming across the field don't have a ten attack. Now they have an eight attack, and now they're stuck across the field. They probably missed their attack, and now you just kill it and get the free points, and that's huge. Um, I love this piece. I absolutely love this piece. Every team I'm thinking of. You know how how can I bust? How can I make this piece even more stronger? And it's hard because he has a zero attack and a zero damage. So you know it it, it can, you know. But I thought about it. if I could give him barrier, then that can make him you know that much more stronger because then he could like see over to your opponent's force and put up a barrier in front of them, or see over to your force and put up a barrier over your dudes. And with nine range, it and being able to see through all that terrain, he could put up barriers in the freakiest as locations. You know, oh, you want to go up to that elevated spot? No, I'm gonna put a barrier right on top of the elevated, right where the right, right where the stairs are. So you can't even go up the elevated. I mean, like he could really mess with people. You know, on the turns when he's not trying to face and teleport. You know. But I gotta figure out how to give him barrier other than like an old school entity or something. But I love this piece. I could go on and on about it. He's not flying, so you can carry him around. It doesn't matter. He has phasing. He doesn't need flying anyways. Um, I love the piece. So the second, the second, and funny enough, they're they're both Nick Fury. They're both Nick Fury. Um, but uh, this is the uncommon one. Uh, he has Indomitable, and he's flying. So, like, this, some of the shield agents in this set are kind of like space suits, so that they can fly, kind of. It's weird. I, they call it battle suit. They kind of look like space suits to me. I don't know. But they can fly, and that's pretty cool. Um, six range, shield team ability. That's kind of what you expect. Um, running shot, ESD, so a 19 from range if you're trying to shoot at him. He has a special damage. Leadership, which is so important to me, when Nick Fury uses it and succeeds, instead of just removing an action token from someone adjacent to him, uh, instead remove an action token from each other friendly character with the shield keyword within four squares. And that is so awesome. That is amazing. Like, yeah, you're probably going to have a lot of the shield pieces next to each other um, to use the shield team ability, but then there's another piece in what if. Uh, there's a daredevil agent of shield that can make them so they don't have to be adjacent to each other so you combo it with the nick fury so then they can they can you can remove action tokens from them. and you actually you also remove it from multiple characters too here that's why i really like that leadership power 
Um, so you can run a shot for three damage, which is nothing amazing, but he, he's really useful for carrying people around, ESD and leadership tokens off people, and then he takes a little bit of damage and he bounces onto these interesting clicks where he loses running shot, he gains sidestep, so he loses some mobility, but now he has this psychic blast that if he damages an opposing character, you can remove an action token from him. So and on top of him being indom indomitable, he can actually start removing action tokens from himself, and he's doing penetrating damage, so the two damage is okay. It's okay. Um, you'll get past toughness, you'll get past invulnerability, you'll get past impervious. Uh, that's half the problem anyways. So, um, I mean, I love being able to like literally attack, 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 every turn, attack, 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 attack. It's really, really cool. He even gets 11 attack, 11 attack for 3 damage near the end of his dial. Like, this is the sweet click right here, dude. Look at this. I mean, he has low defense here, but running shot with the psychic blast, with the 3 damage, and he could keep clearing tokens off of himself. That is amazing. Uh, for 75 points, Indomitable Flying, 6 range, Shield Team Ability. I like the piece a lot. It's really cool. Uh, I played it with the Shield Agents, the regular Shield Agents. They're actually pretty decent too. Um, again, I was only choosing 3 pieces from each set. Uh, and this set was really hard. This set was really hard. Um, uh, there was a lot of pieces that were pretty cool in this set. And I, I kind of had to go with the ones that I've played more often. So Nick Fury was the second one. Then the honorable mention, and this is a really cool piece that I played a little bit, and I've seen my some of my friends play a little bit. Uh, and I think just I think it's a really, really, really interesting piece for what he can do. It's Iron Patriot, and he's an Avenger, which is pretty cool. Um, and it's actually not a him; it's a girl, I believe. Um, but he has this really cool trait. Okay, it's Force Blast, which is always nice to have Force Blast traded, so you can like knock back characters, you know. I will talk about that in a second with another character. Uh, you can knock back characters with just regular attacks. Um, he has defend traded, so this 18 defend, he's he's always sharing it everywhere he goes. He's flying, so he'll probably carry somebody around to share the 18 with. And then he has when an adjacent friendly character is hit by an attack that did not also hit Iron Patriot once per game, she may become the hit target of that attack instead. And that is so fucking, ooh, sorry, pardon my language. It, it It is so freaking awesome. It's so useful to do that. It is so useful to do that because uh, it, it, it can it can really help out. Like if you have like a, a beat stick of some point, if you have, if you have out, um, you know, like a, like a big, a big, pointed dude that you don't want to get one-shotted and your opponent knows that's like your big dude and they're going okay perplex up my damage by two perplex up my attack i'm gonna do pulse wave pulse wave it is so freaking funny with pulse wave this is how it works with pulse wave okay so pull i this is how it's worked in the past one well, of my games at least okay your opponent tallies it all up i'm gonna single target pulse wave the guy in front of iron patriot and they perplexed up all their attacks perplexed up their damage all this kind of stuff and they go okay i hit i hit your dude uh it'll be five damage pulse wave you can't do anything about it and then i go okay i'll use iron patriot's trait he was not hit by the attack so he becomes the hit target of that attack instead and because he was not within the pulse wave range you he, you did not ignore all his powers, meaning that he can now use Invincible to reduce that 5 damage down to 3. And it's insane! Now, correct me in the video if, if the, it doesn't work that way, but as far as I know, that's how it works, you know? Um, and he was not within the Pulse Rave range, so his powers were not countered or ignored. Um, so, or her, whatever. Um, so she would get the Invincible up, you know? So... It, it it's just that ability and there, there's been other things in the game where you could kind of do that um but just the ability to carry somebody up share the 18 maybe even perplex them up one more um on top of you know being able to take that one big attack because when your opponent comes out to do that one big attack it leaves them open and now you're like hey my big dude is still on his first click and now you're out in the open and now I get to make the now I get to make the alpha strike, 
and hit your big dude and maybe win the game. Um, on top of that, Iron Patriot is kind of a harasser. He has she has running shot, two two target in cap. Um, doesn't need damage. Doesn't need a high damage for that, you know. Uh, so she's just running out there in cap, in cap, you know, in cap, in cap, you know. Um, later on in her dial, she's not as useful. Um, I mean, she has smoke cloud, which is kind of useful, but you know, more of just an outwitter at that point. You know, you could still do her trait if you still had it. And she's still sharing a 17. Uh, she still could be force blasting people, maybe knocking them back a square, maybe. Um, I don't know. Um, but, I mean, I, I really think for an honorable mention, she is a really, really, really interesting piece. Avengers keyword, so I can play her on all my favorite Avengers teams. Um, you know, I like it. Scientist keyword is a good keyword, too. Uh, it's a really, really interesting piece, indomitable, so she can just keep doing her thing. She has the right stats, the right powers, really interesting trait. Uh, I really, really like her. So moving on to the Batman set. Uh, let's see. Batman, thank you, HC, HC Realms. Um, so this is the, this is the, um, ooh, where, oh, I have to go to the Fast Forces. There you go. This is the Poison Ivy from the Fast Forces, from the starter set. My bad, starter set. I really like her, and man, there were so many pieces in this set I really, really liked. Um, and like Maxi Zeus, and if, for the same exact reason I like him, she can generate these bystanders. And the bystanders, uh, here, here's where they are. They have, um, they have, um, they have that ability. It's not the, it's not regular fist. It's uh oh, it's autonomous. They have autonomous, meaning that they can do their own thing. They can attack, and it won't use up one of your actions per turn. So Poison Ivy can generate them. She can generate um, maximum three, but she can generate for free, generate a Biting Vine Bystander in a square of hindering terrain within 10 squares. That is what makes it so awesome. Within 10 squares, she doesn't even need line of fire to it. Just it has to be a hindering, squ hindering terrain square within 10 squares. It's so cool. And then for free, remove a body and vine. So like if you put three out on your map and your opponent hasn't attacked them and they move past them or whatever, you can like free action, remove one, and then free action, generate one. Um, it's so cool. I mean, I don't have to really talk about anything else about her, but I really like this ability. Um, the body and vine tokens cannot move, which is eh. If they're not in hindering terrain, you just automatically KO them. So, eh. But they have giant reach 2, they have 9 attack, and they have flurry for 2 damage. Now, they they only have 12 defense, so yeah, you attack them, sure, they're dead. But you had to use up one of your attacks to kill them. Um, they're flurrying you for 2 damage. Yes, only 9 attack. But it's autonomous, meaning that, why not? I mean, seriously, why not? It's not using up one of your actions that turn. And what's cool is... If you miss with if you miss with these flurries, a cool thing what you can do is uh, I'm going to click off this for a second. You can take advantage of this trub alert things. Um, if if so so if you make three misses, if you miss three attacks in the same turn, then that character can can uh, be given a free action to summon in a trub alert character. So. What's cool is these uh, these biting vine tokens could actually do that because one flurries, the second one you know flurries. That's four misses attacks if you missed all four of them, or even if you hit one of them, that's three missed attacks. Then the third biting vine can actually summon in the trouble alert people. That's pretty crazy. Um, they're just harassers. They're just gonna sit around. You're gonna have three things that can make six attacks every turn. Not every turn, but you know, they can make six attacks that turn. Flurry, flurry, flurry for two damage, two damage, two damage. Now, if they have invulnerability or impervious or in invincible, you're not doing much. But uh, still, it's so cool. She's 75 points, which is a little bit expensive. 
Uh, she does ignore hindering terrain for movement purposes, which is nice. She has Smoke Cloud traded, and she modifies her defense value plus one for each two distinct squares of hindering terrain adjacent to her. So if she puts her hindering terrain all around her, it gives her like plus two or plus three defense, um, which can bump her up to, you know, like a, a, a 19 or a 20 defense, which is pretty decent. Uh, she has Mastermind, so if, you know, you put a Biting Vine right behind you, you know, she can mastermind the damage onto the Biting Vine and take no damage, which is really, really good. Um, there's that. And then, so after this, she has this as a trait, so she can do it the entire game. Um, but then she bounces on to Mind Control, Incapacitate, Barrier. Like, tell me how that is not, like, really, really useful in just so many ways. And three damage. I mean, come on. She can end cap you. She can put up a barrier and slow you down. She can try to mind control you, or she can just shoot you for three damage. I mean, she 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 does a lot. She really really does a lot. And then if she takes a little bit more damage, steel energy, regeneration, outwit, stealth, Batman energy, Batman enemy to share the love and attack. I mean, she really brings a lot to the table. And uh, I've been playing a lot of Gotham City Underworld uh, theme teams. And I, I mean, she's a linchpin on all those teams. I really, really like her. Um, I've actually got my hands on like two or three of her because she's not unique. So like, you know, each one can ge generate three biting vine bystanders. That means if you have three poison ivies on the map, you could have nine biting vine bystanders on the map. And if you play her map, um, if you play her on her map um, that came in the starter starter pack even though it says fast forces right here okay um it's a it's a starter set uh the map her map goes really well with her uh and gives it even more uh interesting things so um i i really like the piece it's 75 points it's just a really fun piece it's not overpowered in any way but it's really fun piece the next piece i want to talk about from the set and this is more this is definitely a stronger piece it's the super rare uh, Hawkman and Hawk Girl, and I, I'm thrilled to have her. I'm thrilled that, that I'm thrilled that they made this piece, and uh, totally shout out, shout out to the person who like won worlds or whatever who made this piece, because they made a great piece. Um, so this is a really cool piece. It's 125 points. Um, it has all, it has so much going on. So it has the Justice League Unlimited uh trait which is really cool i won't really go much into it um it's it can clear a token off of somebody if you roll a six on a it's kind of like a leadership but uh it, it's interesting um but you don't always get that um but it is useful you know it is useful it's unfortunate that all the other characters cannot remove a token off of her because she's 125 points and not 100 points or less but it's still cool to, you know, if you roll a six, you're going to move an action token from a friendly character with a Justice League keyword that's 100 points or less. They do not have to be adjacent. So that's cool. And, I mean, half the time, I'm gonna, I mean, 90% of the time I'm going to be playing her, it's going to be on a Justice League theme team. So it has some purpose. Um, this trait is really cool. At the beginning of your turn, you may turn Hawkman and Hawk Girl's dial to the same click of a different color. So it, this is very similar to some dials we've seen in the past. It's only five clicks long. On both sides but at the beginning of your turn you can swap between them so you can start out and be like okay I'm gonna charge with empower and then next turn I'm gonna hyper I'm gonna change the hypersonic outwit I play her a lot I play him a lot on the hypersonic piece you know but if I know like they're gonna be dealing some damage to me I might switch over to the invulnerability and try to shrug some of that damage um, you know or if I get over here and I'm like, I don't need charge anymore. They're right up on me. Maybe I'll switch over and have Flurry Battle Fury. You know? You know, that's it's, it's, it's an interesting combination. Um, and then also, when they would be KO'd, you may instead turn them to click one of a different color and they can't use this trait for the rest of the game. And that's protected by Pulse Wave. So yes, five clicks for 125 points is pretty low. But then you add in the point that you're actually getting 10 clicks for 125 points. Because let's say you're over here and you get over get hit over here and you're like, oh man, I don't wanna I don't wanna lose this. So I swap over to this click and then I get KO'd. Well guess what? You start back right here and you continue on. 10 clicks for 125 points of this much potency. 11 attacks, 10, 10 attacks, 18, 17 defenses, 3 damage all the way down the line. 
it's pretty freaking killer. Um, good keywords, Justice League, Justice Society, Police, all those three keywords I love. She also has a, a third trait, uh, Sidestep, Traded Sidestep. So this isn't just hypersonic by itself, it's hypersonic Sidestep. This isn't just Flurry. Normally you see Flurry and you're like, but I have no movement attack. She still has Sidestep. Sidestep Flurry is not bad at all. But, and this is what makes it better, it's not just regular sidestep, it's three movement sidestep. What the flip? That's amazing. I can't think of, like, there's very few pieces in the game that can do a modified sidestep. And then, modify attack plus one when targeting only characters without wing symbol. So, like, if you're attacking someone that doesn't have flying, guess what? That 11 attack becomes a 12 attack. That 10 attack becomes an 11 attack. You're you're literally looking at something where she never goes below 11 attack. Never goes below 3 damage. And you get 10 clicks of it for 125 points. Ugh. And ignores characters for movement purposes. So you're just never going to be able to base her. Because she can just sidestep away. I mean, it's sick. It's absolutely sick. It's not the type of sick that's meta, that's like, you know, Professor X, Cyclops, Wolverine, that I'm like, you know, I would be ashamed to play every week. It's the type of sick that, like, Indomitable Flying, Justice League theme team, Police theme team. Wow. I love this piece. So much kudos to the person who uh, worked with WizKids to make this. Like, just, wow. I wonder if someone says their name down here. Uh, wonder, 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 wonder. Uh, I don't know if anyone has mentioned the person's name. Man, I, I kind of feel bad. I don't have the time to look it up, but so, so much kudos. So much kudos to make, making this doll. It's a great doll. I love this piece. Um, you know, but the Poison Ivy, I've played the Poison Ivy. The Poison Ivy is more in my, we're, uh, my wheelhouse. Um, of just fun and silly. This piece is just strong, and I love it. Justice League. We finally got a Hawkman and Hawk Girl with Justice League and Hawk and Justice Society. Gosh, I love this piece. It's such a good piece. So the honorable mention, I have to mention it, is Suited Henchman, and it 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 works so good for so many different reasons. Like I've been saying with the Poison Ivy, I've been enjoying Gotham City Underworld uh, theme teams uh, more more often and more recently and this piece puts in so much work with a gotham city underworld theme team uh, because the underworld team ability meaning that he can carry around anybody anybody carry him around and, and if you land on this willpower click guess what carry him around two turns in a row or you carry him around with sidestep you know one third of the time uh, just to carry people around five points is so good um but then also you know, he can be used an offensive piece. I mean, you bounce on it if you choose, if you roll a one and get range combat expert. Now you can maybe you do two damage. Maybe you could go for go for broke and go up to three damage. Or maybe you charge somebody with quake and hit a bunch of people. I've done that before. Maybe you blade somebody. I've actually I've I've bladed somebody for five damage with suited henchmen before. Or or maybe you or you, you, you next you get get next to people and with poison and just say take five points or take poison either way or or you flurry somebody within power I've, I've done it where i've had multiple and multiple multiple of these on empower and they boosted up the damage with flurry and stuff like all these clicks are actually pretty pretty decent for five points oh man this piece i'm gonna keep going not only that but he does not count for or against the theme team so you have five points left over and don't want to play an id card Play a suited henchman. Why not? You got 10 points, 15 points left over. Run two or three suited henchmen. I mean, it's ridiculous. Um, and then also all the pieces in the set that can generate them. Um, I love them. Like, you know, all the pieces like the headmaster. Okay, come on. Okay, here you go. No, wrong one. I guess it's the rare joker that has it. The rare joker has Gotham crime boss. It has leadership and mastermind. And when they would use leadership and succeed, instead of remove an action token, you can generate a, a suited henchman. And it's so fun. I made I made a team that had just all crime bosses. And it would just be like every turn I'd have like four or five rolls. Um 
because uh, Roland Daggett is 35 points with that. So I'd run multiple of him and just generate a ton of suited henchmen and just be like, carry, 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 carry. Okay, range combat expert. Okay, blades. Okay, it was crazy. And it wouldn't work without this piece. So not only is he great on a Gotham City Underworld themed team, he's great to just fill in any kind of team. He can carry people. He can be offensive. He's five flipping points. Come on. For all these... Gosh, he brings so much to the table for five points. He had to be... He had to be my honorable mention. And I was if I was making a top ten for this set, he would probably be in the top five. I love the piece. So, let's move on to the last set of the day. Um, we're talking about... The, this is the most recent set. Um, oops, I just spoiled it all. Um, so this is Secret War, Secret Wars Battle World, and um, my favorite figure in the set so far is Sheriff Steve Rogers. He is amazing. I played him probably three times now, um, mostly on police theme teams, but he has police and soldier, which is cool. If he had Avengers, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, if he had Avengers keyword, I can't, I, I don't know. Um, but uh, he has police team ability, which is useful. Six range, which is useful. Okay, so you're like, okay, run in shot. Okay, three damage. Okay, so he's a good little ter tertiary attacker. No, no, no. I don't, I don't use him for that half the time. I use him half the time for this really cool thing. He has leadership, which is great on a police or soldier theme team. When Sheriff Steve Rogers or an adjacent friendly character is attacked, the attacker cannot positively modify or replace their attack values. What? Like, so, if, like, you know, I was talking about, like, this headmaster thing from X-Men, so overpowered. Yeah, I'm going to perplex up my attack plus three and then perplex up my range plus three and then do all this stuff and then hit you for, like, five or six damage. No, you don't get the plus three attack. You don't get it. If you're attacking Sheriff Steve Rogers or anybody adjacent to him, you do not get that plus three attack. Okay, well, I'll use Batman enemy and I'll replace my attack with this uh, chick that has 12 attack. No, you can't replace your attack either. <laughs> he just shuts down all that cheese. He shuts it all down and I love that. So not only is he a, a, a good tertiary attacker, I mean, come on, you know, running shot for three damage. But he has leadership, and he can clear tokens off of himself if he if he rolls a, a five or a six if he hit his target, and then he he really shuts down perplex and all that kind of really good stuff. It's I mean, and twenty dan you have to hit a twenty from range in order to hit him. Gosh, police team ability. Oh, well, <laughs> gosh, I mean it's so good. It's so good. Uh, I mean. <sighs> And then let's say actually let's say he takes some damage because you know he may take some damage. Um, I've had people like poison him or energy explosion him or whatever you know they hit him. Then he bounces on to eighteen defend with enhancement. This piece does not stop giving up and like just supporting your team. I mean he could still hit you for two, but now he's sharing that eighteen defend all around. So if you have ESD or if you have combat reflexes, now you're going up to 20. And he has the enhancement. So like, oh, okay, so like I have this 17, I have this 17 defense dude with ESD and 2 damage. Suddenly he's doing 3 damage. Suddenly he has a 20 defense from range. It's and you can use the police team ability to reduce uh and a target's defense by 1. If he's next to the person, which he will be because of enhancement and defend. And because and this thing's gone, but still, he would have been next to him anyways. I mean, this dude is nuts. He's a great common, 50 points. Uh, if he had Avengers keyword, I'd probably be drooling right now. I love this piece. He's really, really, really cool. So, my second favorite piece in the set is She-Hulk. Now, there's multiple She-Hulks, but uh, let's see. She's a police character. I played her recently. It's the regular, uncommon She-Hulk. Um, she's great. You know, you're like, okay, She-Hulk, so she punches people. No, this girl running shots people. What? Yeah, if you don't know, she's actually the Thor of Yensen City. So, um, they've given her this cool power set where she has, she's flying, 
She has running shot and she has force blast. So she can knock people back. But then the bad thing is she has zero range. So you're like, how does she shoot people? Well, she her special attack power gives her energy explosion with a range of six and two targets. Meaning that she can run and shut out, choose two targets, energy explode all over them, and then knock them back two squares or however much she damaged them with force blast. That's really, really cool. She has 18 impervious and probability control for three clicks. I mean, it's really, really good. Um, now, yes, you run into stuff where, okay, I have invulnerability, I have impervious, I have invincible, I take nothing, I take nothing, I take nothing. True. And that's happened so many times. I run into, like, a high point beat stick piece, and I'm like, she has four damage, but all she can do is energy explosion. Her. But I will say I found a new answer around it, and that is using one of the new objects that just came out at WizKids Opens, and that is... Uh, Proxima, Prox, Proxima's Midnight Spear, and that allows her to use her regular damage for a ranged action, and then afterwards, if any hit target, she can then uh, either make them a mobile, which would work really, really well with her Force Blast, so you could like knock somebody back four squares, and then make them a mobile, or you can deal them like one penetrating, I think, damage afterwards, so she could like running shot, Use the Proxima Midnight Spear to do a regular range action attack. Hit for four damage, then maybe hit for an ex maybe deal an extra one afterwards. That's five damage. Running shot with prob eleven attack for eighty eight points because the spear is eight points. It's incredible. It's incredible. So let's say she takes some damage. Let's say they do psychic blast or they outwit her because she can be she can do all that kind of stuff. Um, then she bounces on the charge. With super strength, and then this 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 new special damage power that is, where is it? <laughs> they they did the wrong symbol here. Uh, it's exploit weakness. When a character is knocked back at least two squares by She Hulk's attack, which they might be because of force blast, after resolutions given an action token. So that's pretty cool. She can exploit weakness you. She could be doing five damage with an with a heavy object. Exploit weakness. And uh, she knocked you back five squares into a wall, and then she gave you an action token. I mean, seriously. It, it, it's really decent. Her attack value goes down at, some, at a certain point, sure. But, you know, whatever. And what's cool is she has Defender's Keyword and the team ability. So, like, you can play her with the, uh, the, the, the Doctor Strange from Avengers Defender's War. Or any of those other pieces on a Defender's theme team. And also share that 18 around. The probability control, the running shot energy explosion with Proxima Midnight Spear being able to do regular damage. I mean, sh she's just really, really solid for 80 points. And I've played her multiple times on police theme teams. Um, she's even as Guardian too, which is pretty cool. Um, she's just a really, really strong piece. I really, really like her for what she can do. And it's so awesome to have Proxima Midnight Spear and actually be able to get around this because you know they factor that into it. Okay, like, if she, if she could do a regular run-in shot four damage, she'd have to be, like, 110 or 120 points. But no, she can't do it, so we'll make her 80 points. And now I found a way around it for eight points. And guess what? She's awesome. So, um, I, I really, really like her. She can carry people around with flight, at least for half her doll. I mean, she's great. I really, 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 really like her. So the 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 runner-up for the th for um, Secret Worlds Battle World is it is Alex. Where is he? He is he uncommon? I thought he was a common. No, I guess he's uncommon. Alex Wilder. He is unique. He's a runaway, you know. And I've kind of poo-pooed the runaways from this set. I even poo-pooed the Fast Forces, saying it was the the worst Fast Forces ever made. But I'll say this. This dude is a really, really good utility piece, and that's because he just he has a lot going for him. Okay, so he's stealthy, so you're gonna park him in hindering and just make sure your opponent doesn't be able to shoot at him. Um, he has sidestep if they get close to him, which is kind of good. He has shape change on top of that, so like even if like okay I can't shoot him, I'm gonna hypersonic up to him and try to hit him, and he hits a shape change. Ouch, you know, um, you've just overextended for a shape change. Um, and then once per once per force, when he is KO'd, he actually joins your opponent's team, which is really interesting. 
You know, it's really interesting. But it also means you can then KO him as well and get another 25 points back for you. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's only 25 points. This is this is what makes him really, really good. He's 25 points. Um, and he has this really cool ability. It's a free action. An opponent chooses two of outwit, perplex, or probability control. And you can use those he can use those powers until your next turn. So your opponent has to think, okay, okay, what power do I not want Alex to be able to use? And a lot of times it's like either perplex or probability control. Because outwit is kind of different where you can only use it against your opponent. So that means you have to have Alex Wilder kind of overextend to get out into the field in order to use outwit now i mean if there's a good safe spot that he can be in stealth sure but a lot of times he hangs back and that's where perplex and probability control can still be useful so i find like saying okay your opponent can alex you can use outwit and perplex and that kind of curves it off but still that like if you're if he was in a good position to outwit your opponent be like i'm not letting you outwit my pieces so yeah you're gonna get perplex and probability control maybe for 25 points and i'm gonna try to run and shot you oh i'm stealthy okay i'm gonna try to run up and punch you yeah i'm gonna mastermind the damage well frick you know <laughs> i mean the, the dude the dude pulls his weight for 25 points for 25 points even having four range and nine attack like the dude's not bad and i would i mean i could recommend him on a lot of teams i guess scientists and mystical keywords which is good generic keywords masters of evil and runaways is very niche i probably wouldn't be using them on those but um this dude's really cool now i mean poke him for one then he just gets outwit poke him for two yeah you really want to poke him for one i would say poke him for one is the way to do it um still though if he doesn't take any damage he's so useful for 25 points and he has so many ways not to take damage so um he's pretty cool he's pretty cool he's probably my favorite runaways piece from the new set and i that says a lot because i really do like molly hayes and i kind of like clara prest so um but those were those were my favorite pieces from 2018 those were only from the main sets that came out in 2018 i know there was a turtle set and maybe a star star trek set that came out maybe maybe i don't know maybe star trek that came out last year i know there was con exclusives and all that kind of stuff but these were just main set stuff that i liked and uh i had a lot of fun with again the secret world battle world set is kind of weird because it, it's the newest set so i haven't had as much time to use some of the new pieces but um a lot of really cool pieces uh I, I could probably make a whole video just on the batman set because there were so many pieces like maxi zeus and uh talia La, talia talia you know um al ghul that I, I just so many pieces are really really cool really really interesting the, the chase green lantern i just so many pieces i really like from that set um i've really liked the batman set uh, and i can't wait for dc rebirth cannot wait for that but uh, i want to thank everybody who stay tuned and watch the whole 47 minute video uh thank you so much it is a longer video i don't try to make longer videos but i wanted to make something to you know you know because it's the last day of 2018 and this kind of video is really cool to watch so I hope you all have a great day. Have a great uh, uh, New Year's Day, everybody. Have fun. Be safe. And uh, have a lot of fun playing Heroclix in the future. See ya.